What you are seeing now is quite normal. These contrails are the trademark of high-altitude aircraft since the close of World War II. You notice that the condensation disappears fairly quickly, much like your breath on a cold winter day. This is as it should be, and as it has been. For those curious enough to delve into the physics, chemistry, and thermodynamics of contrails, this normalcy has a more thorough explanation. Yes, science and common sense do agree, and the balances of nature are achieved with this common phenomenon. And now we must take a different turn, a turn to explore an unusual world that now surrounds us, and yet a world that many of us remain unaware of. The atmosphere of this planet has been changed, and you are now being introduced to one of the main causes of that change. The aircraft at the upper portion of the screen is leaving a normal contrail, and it vanishes as any trail of water vapor is expected to. But beneath it, you see an aircraft emission that is stationary, thick, continuous, and persistent, and it must eventually be concluded that it is not primarily water vapor. The environmental conditions for each trail are not exceptionally different from one another, and yet the result and impact from each trail is entirely different. The only logical way this can occur is if the trails themselves are very different from one another, and indeed they are. The majority of the footage that you are now seeing has been filmed in the high desert regions of New Mexico. This is an arid environment with very low humidity levels. It is, in fact, a classic region for conventional contrail formation. Contrails themselves can and do form easily in a low humidity environment. In the past, the passing of a short-lived contrail in the high, clear desert sky was an innocuous and frequent occurrence. Cold and dry conditions, exactly those conditions that are normally found in the upper atmosphere, are extremely favorable to contrail formation. The humidity levels of the upper atmosphere are actually relatively low and is one of the very reasons that most clouds occur in the middle of the troposphere, being the lower portion of our atmosphere up to an altitude of approximately seven miles or so. As this examination of our atmosphere continues, we will be now required to consider four types of events or phenomena. In addition to the customary existence of clouds and contrails, we must now consider a new entry, that of the aerosol. An aerosol is a solid particle in suspension, either in a liquid or a gas, and in this case we are considering the atmosphere as the gas to study. The aerosols will manifest in two primary forms, as an aerosol emission from aircraft and as an aggregate or collection of aerosols in the atmosphere. A suitable term for this collection of aerosols is an aerosol bank. It is known now that the persistent trails that form the subject of this film are primarily solid in nature and origin, and that they are not predominantly water vapor. A brief explanation of cloud formation will help us to understand why this is so. Clouds, that is, normal clouds, require two fundamental elements to form, particles and moisture. Clouds are not suited to form in especially clean air. They require particulate matter, called condensation nuclei, that act as a base for water vapor to adhere to. The size of these nuclei, for the process to be effective, must be extremely small. The size of these nuclei are on the order of sub-micron. For comparison, a human hair is 60 to 100 microns thick, and an asbestos fiber is a couple of microns in thickness. The other essential component for normal clouds to form is a minimum level of humidity. From numerous sources, this minimum is on the order of 70% relative humidity. Notice that the requirements for cloud formation and contrail formation are already entirely different from one another. This is because they are entirely different phenomena based upon entirely different physical principles. Contrails can and should form readily in clean, cold, and dry air. Normal clouds, on the other hand, require higher moisture levels and a particulate or aerosol base from which to develop. 
The radical transformation of our sky as a direct result of aircraft activity now forces us to address an entirely new set of conditions. Aircraft are now repeatedly dispersing materials into the upper atmosphere at flight altitude, roughly from 35,000 to 40,000 feet. These materials expand rather than evaporate, and they usually transform into an unsightful haze that over the recent years has decreased our general visibility down to ground levels. One of the remarkable facts is that this commonly now occurs at very low levels of relative humidity, on the order of 30 to 40 percent, instead of the 70 percent or greater that is associated with cloud formation. And so we know now that these are not clouds in any conventional sense. They are indeed a unique and artificial creation that now crosses new thresholds in the atmospheric and geophysical sciences. There is one way that such a transformation can be made, and that is with the introduction of vast quantities of an extremely small, water-loving metallic salt at flight altitude. This transformation cannot be achieved with water vapor alone, and the emissions under examination are indeed not water vapor. They are solid, and they are well entrenched into your air supply. These important conclusions are at the very heart of the aerosol operations that are being disclosed here. These changes in the very atmosphere that we breathe have a fundamental impact upon the life of this planet, and these aerosol operations have many potential applications that reduce the sanctity of that life. These operations are being conducted. They are being conducted without your participation or your informed consent. They are affecting your life, the lives of those you know and love, and the very life of the planet itself.